the second part of tutorials, you will continue growing in your ability to create parametric models by learning about embossing, creating a simple parametric sketch, and then applying that to a more complex sketch. You will then build your understanding of parametric models by taking it step by step until you're able to make a nearly unlimited number of designs. You will learn a ton during the series. So welcome to the Learn It channel. Lesson 12, part two, design parametric tire treads. Before we begin, some of our viewers have asked how we move our models around so easily. We are using the 3D Connection Space Mouse Pro. A link to it and to the Space Mouse Compact can be found in the description. Basically, it helps you control the model like you have it in your hand. Stay tuned for more details in a future video, but we highly recommend ordering one to help you design faster and smarter. Also, we would love your help in considering buying us a coffee or becoming a patron. Links in the description will navigate you to how you can help. So the next step of our parametric tire is to model the parametric treads for our tire. So this is when you'll see both art and math coming together to make something amazing with Fusion 360. Let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is create a plane so that we can do some sketching above our tire here. So let's create an offset plane. We're gonna pick our XY plane and move it above the tire. So here is an instance that we will also use a parameter. Say for example that we just create a, a plane at this point 21 inches above. Well, this is great, but what happens when our tire gets even bigger and crosses that plane? Well, then we're gonna start running into some problems. So let's go change parameters. And let's just show you here, we can go to our uh, rim diameter of, well, let's just go 30. Well, there we have it. Our plane is now hidden by our tire. So let's just go, okay, we'll undo that. So let's use a parameter for our plane. So let's just double click on our plane there. And here for our distance, let's type in our tire outer diameter divided by two, enter. And now you can see it's right in line with the top of our tire there. Obviously we don't want it perfectly tangent to our tire. So let's just go back there and add, well, let's just add maybe two inches to it. There we have it. So no matter what our tire size is, let's go back there. Let's do now a 25 inch rim diameter. Our plane will always be above our tire. That will also help in creating our parametric treads. So let's go okay. Now next step is to draw a rectangle that is actually equal to the circumference of our tire. So let's go there to create a sketch. We are going to select our plane that we've just created, go to our two point rectangle, center rectangle, and I'm just going to draw an exaggerated box right now. There we have it. So let's apply some parameters to this rectangle. Let's press D for our shortcut. And just to explain, some people have a struggle with dimensioning. They don't know what to pick or why. Well, we actually have different ways to select our dimension. For example, if we want the spacing between this line and this line to be our tire width, well, we can pick that line and that line, and this will be our tire width. Or what we can do, let's just go undo. I'm gonna delete that. Obviously the distance between those two we can select, or we can just pick the single line over there. That's the exact same thing, tire width. Perfect, so whatever's easy for you. Sometimes it's easier to pick two elements and sometimes it's easier just to pick one. So now we would like the length of this rectangle to be the complete circumference of our tire. So how do we do that? Well, we can remember the equation to find a circumference, which is our diameter times pi, or some may have learned it, 2r times pi. Now 2r is two times radius, so that's the exact same thing as our diameter. So we need to calculate our diameter times pi. So let's do that. D, select that line. 
and we'll select our tire outer diameter times. Now here is the secret formula for pi. We're just going to type in capital P, capital I. And as soon as we do that, we can see that our text goes to black, which means it has found or it can calculate that equation. We can press enter. So what we have right now for our rectangle is the complete circumference of our tire. And in fact, we can draw in this rectangle and project it or emboss it to our tire to create a tread pattern. Let's just prove it to you. So one thing I forgot is for my display settings, camera is set to perspective. I'm going to turn it back to orthographic, which makes things a lot easier to work with. So now let's go back to our sketch here and let's just grab ourselves a circle. I'm just going to draw a random circle there. Go finish and let's emboss this to our face. Now what it's doing right now is it's doing all sorts of different calculations with Infusion. And basically it's taking the circle and it's projecting it onto the outer diameter face of the tire. And the center of it is going to be the center of our tire. So actually, if we increase the depth here, let's just go to two inches, you can see that it's actually tapered. Now the taper point will actually go straight to the center of our tire, which is good for us to remember. Now, right now it's positioned right there for some reason, but let's just go, okay, we'll go back, delete our emboss, Let's go back here and move our circle out and let's add a couple others and we'll see what happens. Finish. We'll go back to our sketch there. Emboss it. Let's emboss all three. So we get an error there. Let's just go back to our sketch here. We'll make those circles a little bit smaller bring them in a little bit. Now let's try and emboss them again. All right, so there you go. Now you can start see them wrapping around our part a little bit more. Let's just go okay. And we can move that over a little bit more yet. And as we do so, we can see on our tire that our circle, our embossed feature actually moves down. So in theory, we have our rectangle, which is the length of the rectangle is our circumference of the part. So in theory, we could make all of our tread patterns along here, wrap it around our tire and uh, try and call it a day. But that would take an extremely long time to do every single one of our treads. So we're not gonna do it this way. But this is just showing you a little bit more how to use the emboss feature, but we're not going to do that quite yet. So let's delete our embossing. We'll go back to our sketch. Now let's do something a lot more simple. I'm gonna delete those circles. Now remember with our parameters, we created a tread pattern number of 44. Now remember, as you create this parameter, I'm just gonna create another one here for sake of explanation. For our unit, make sure to select no units. We don't want it to be selected as anything other then no units, if it is in millimeters or inches, it will mess up. We just want this to be a whole number so that we can do some calculations with it. So our tread pattern number is 44. Basically what that means is we are going to have, if we were just to look at one section of treads, there's gonna be 44 pattern instances of our tread around our tire. So use that information right now to reason. And say to yourself, instead of creating a rectangle that is the full circumference of our tire, we are going to divide this by our number of instances. So let's do that. Divided by number of instances or tread pattern number. Now what do we have? If we work within this sketch, and then pattern the instances based on the number of pattern in our parameter, well, then we'll get an even amount of treads. Let's prove it to you. We'll finish our sketch, bring up our parameter window. And now as we change our rim diameter, look at our rectangle will also change. So let's go to 24 inches. There we go. 
our tread pattern number. Let's go to 36. That gets a little bit bigger. Let's go to 30. That still yet gets a little bit bigger. Remember, the lower number here, the fewer instances will have wrapping around our tire, so our rectangle will get bigger. Let's say we want 60 instances. Well, there we go. Our rectangle will be even narrower. So let's keep this at 44 just for fun. Great. So now we've got a sketched rectangle, which is based on a parameter. So now we can start with the design process for our treads. So I've actually noticed here that our sketch was created and our construction plane was created outside of our component. We have our master assembly selected. I would like all the features that I have created for my tire specifically within the assembly for our tire or the component for our tire. So I'm just going to drag that sketch into the component. I can do the same thing with the construction plane. And there we have it. Once we selected our component now, our timeline will update to have all the features for that component specifically in our component. If we go back to our master assembly, then we'll have everything we've ever created in our timeline, but that will get confusing with more features created. So let's just go back to our component and we're actually going to rename this now our tire. Great. We can expand that. We've got our sketches here and let's go to our last sketch. Now let's hide our body so we can actually see what we're doing here. So what we have here is a parametric rectangle at this point. And as we change our parameters, our rectangle will change correspondingly. I'm just going to move our dimensions so that is a lot easier to see. Now for the treads, this is where we have to take both art and math and put them together in our design process. So we've really got to think, what kind of treads do we want? If we were to go online and search tread patterns, we can see that there are tons of different patterns that we can select, but I'm just going to use my imagination. I would like to do something simple to start. So I'm going to do an arrow tread pattern and I'm going to have four spread across my rectangle here. So as explained in previous tutorials, if we can design everything within quadrant one and then mirror them to the other quadrants, well, there's a huge benefit in doing so. So we're going to create our feature in quadrant one and four, and then eventually mirror them over to quadrants two and three. So let's first of all, create a center line there, and we can do it down the middle of our part in both horizontal and vertical directions. Press X to turn them into a construction line. Now I would like to create what's going to be the gap between uh, the two treads in the middle at least. So let's create a line there and there. These are solid lines. Now these are floating, so I'm going to have to constrain them. So let's create a symmetry constraint. Pick those two and the center line. And now what this means is they'll always be completely symmetric. So now let's create a dimension between the two. Press D, select those two lines, and we're going to call this our tread gap. You could see there that I actually just typed in G for gap, and it brought up all of my parameters that have the letter G in them. So that's just a very easy way. We don't have to type the entire parameter. Let's go tread gap, enter. Okay, and right now it's set for quarter inch. Let's just go to our parameter window here and let's see what happens if I change the gap. Let's go to 0.5. There we go. That updates. Let's go to one inch tread gap. Great. So let's just keep it at quarter inch. Now I would like to create another gap over here. So we're going to have four instances of treads. So let's create another one at the midpoint here. So let's create a construction line. We can see that as we run our mouse along this line, there's no snap point for our midpoint because our midpoint is right here. So this is an easy constraint to create. We're just going to, well, let's call this a construction line, first of all. And now we can go to symmetry at the top and select, well, actually, we don't want to select this line quite yet. We want to create one more line over here because there's going to be a slight gap. We want these sections to be exactly the same. So let's create 
a gap between that and that. Now, instead of creating a formula every single time, we know that this is our tread gap right here. So I'm just gonna pick that and go divide it by two. Great, now we can create two more lines over here, one and two, and say that we want, well, this is still floating, so we have to make that symmetric. So yeah, let's select that line, this line, and that line. So this will always be in the middle of those two lines. And this is now parametrically controlled. So now we're gonna do the same thing with these two lines. We're gonna create a symmetry constraint there and create our tread gap in between. Again, we don't have to type in tread gap. We can just pick the parameter that we know is a tread gap. There we go. In this case, it's dimension 52. Great, so now this section is exactly the same as this section. And that's why I've created this little gap in between there is because we have to use our imagination. If this was to continue forever, well, we have to make sure that we have the same dimensions in each box. So at this point, you really need to use your imagination and you need to check your parameters often to see what actually happens on your screen. Is there something that you need to adjust? Why do you need to adjust it? What can you do to make it better? So for me, I'm going to just do one simple method, uh, but for you as the learner, as the student, uh, you will think of different patterns as well. The point is try something, test the parameter, see if it works or see if it breaks, and then adjust. We might have to do that right now as well. Let's have fun. We're gonna create a line and I am going to create a simple pattern just like this. Let's start with uh, this section first. And now I'm going to picture that this arrow pattern is gonna wrap all the way around the tire and come back. So this line is actually the same in theory as this line. So let's create the exact same pattern down here. And to reselect our line, we can just right click and go up, repeat line. There we go. Okay, and we can connect them there as well. You can see that these two lines are on an angle. So let's make them vertical. We can just select our vertical constraint feature. Boom and boom right there. Now we'd also like to constrain these two points and these two points. That will make sure that they're always the same height. And we wanna make sure that these two points are vertically constrained. Now they're not quite fully black, so we can see what's not constrained yet. Well, it's the length of the lines. So let's make them all the same length. We can just go equal, one, two, one, two. Oh, this is saying that it's over constrained. So let's see why, why is this over constrained? Ah, okay, well, let's work with this first of all. All right, let's constrain this section first and we're going to press D, select that line and the point of our arrow and this is going to be our tread gap divided by two. There we go. Now let's see what's still not constrained. Oh, it's this point right here. So we're also going to say that from this line to there is going to be our tread gap divided by two. And again, I'm just going to pick that dimension because I know that this is tread gap divided by two as well. There we go. So now what we can do is say, well, I'd like these, oh, before we say that those lines need to be equal, let's create a tread gap divided by two. And now the only thing that needs to be adjusted is the length of our line. So if we say that this line and that line are equal, well, then all of them are equal as well. Perfect. Now, one thing I want is to be able to select this profile in one shot. Right now you can see that because the solid line exists here, we actually have a profile there, 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 and right here. So if we turn this into a construction line, that breaks it and says that this is now one profile, which makes things a whole lot easier when we do our pattern instances. So now let's create the arrow on this side with the exact same dimensions and constraints as this one over here. I'll do this quick.
So now this is looking great. We've got our two arrows. Let's go finish sketch. Now we're gonna make our body visible and let's see what happens when we emboss those two profiles to our tire. So let's select those sketch profiles and our face is just gonna be our tire. And look at what we have here. It's looking great. Now the depth of our treads, we have a parameter for that, tread height. Amazing, enter, gets rid of our sketch. Now this is looking really, really good. At this point, we wanna test our parameters. So let's go back there. We can say for our tread pattern number, let's call it 60. As we do that, our treads get a little smaller. Let's go up to 80, perfect. Let's go to 20, that'll be a lot bigger and the angle of our arrow will get more acute as well. So the lower the number, the more acute of an angle and the higher the number, the more obtuse of an angle. So let's go back to 44. Now, one thing I would like to note here is I would actually like to retain the tread all the way to this point of our tire. So our tread is not quite long enough. And that's because on our sketch, you remember that in order to make these exactly the same, we had to create a little gap over here. Well, a quick and easy solution is, let's just make a line, and I'm just going to do a random angle over here and length, right click to repeat line, and let's just, for fun here, I'll just do different lengths, and now we can connect those together. I would like to just extend this section past the edge of our profile a little bit so it will wrap all the way around the tire or the edge of the tire. So now let's make these lines collinear. There and there. We'll do the same thing there. Perfect. We can make this vertical. And now the only constraint is the length here and we can specify this whatever we want. So we can select uh, from there to there. And I'm just going to call this our tread gap. Yeah, let's keep it our tread gap times one and a half. There we go. Let's see what this looks like. So we actually have to pick our emboss and that profile was not selected. So let's go cancel, go back to our sketch and make that profile of our tire a construction line so that it breaks the link and this is now one total profile. Okay, let's finish our sketch and now we can see that the actual tread wraps around the tire. Now we're actually going to perform a cut operation and get rid of some of this so that it's it flows a little bit more. Of course, if we're doing an off-road tire, maybe we want that tread to wrap around to the outer wall of our tire. But for me, we're just going to adjust our previous sketch so that we have a, another profile that we can cut our tire treads to. So at this point, we have an option. We can pattern all of our instances or we can mirror it and then pattern all of them together. Now there's no right or wrong way of doing this. And you might think that the logical way would be dot, dot, dot. Yes. There are logical ways of doing things, and oftentimes the logical ways are the right ways. However, please note with Fusion 360, sometimes the logical ways, even though they're more correct, they take a lot more time to process. So I'm not saying don't do the logical thing. Always try the logical thing first. See how long it takes to process. And then if it takes too long, try the other way. It still might be logical, not as best as you might think, but if the processing time is a lot faster, well, then we might balance our decision and say, okay, well, I'll do the second most logical decision in order to create a faster processing time. So for me, why don't we just create a, well, let's mirror it first, and then we'll pattern all the instances around. So we're gonna mirror. For our object type, we'll pick features. We'll pick those treads, and our mirror plane will be our X, Z. Let's go OK. There we have it. Now we are going to circular pattern, features, one, two, and our axis is going to be our Y axis. 
Now, what's the quantity? Remember, this is parametrically controlled. So we're just going to type in NU for a number, tread pattern number. And would you look at it? There we go. We've got this beautiful tire being created before our eyes. Great. So there we have it. It's looking really, really, really good. So the one thing I'll also note here is as I've created this, the gap here is not quite a quarter of an inch. And this could be for a bunch of different reasons. One reason is, is the width of it is probably going to be pretty close to a quarter inch. But remember that we're using the emboss feature. So the emboss feature is taking a sketch profile that's at a certain plane and it is embossing it. But remember, it's going to be on a slight angle. So all of these profiles are going to be off just a wee little bit, and that's okay. So now let's just clean this up a little bit. I'd like to remove some of the profile on the side here. So let's go back to our original sketch. And here we have it. So remember that the outside diameter that we've created here is actually the outside profile of our tire, including the tread height. And right here is our tread height. So we're going to create the three point arc right there. And this I can say I want tangent to that and tangent to that. Perfect. Now this will create actual an actual profile. Yes, it won't be in line with our fillet on our tire, uh, but this will still look great. So now I'd like to create another profile. So pick that, our center point, that way it will always be constrained. And we will say that this is a three inch rad, so a six inch diameter. So this profile is what we're going to use to cut out our treads that we don't want. Okay, so there we go. We're going to make that sketch visible. And then we're going to say we want to revolve this around our tire, select our axis, our Y axis. Great. And we are going to cut it for our operation. Let's go. OK. Beautiful. So there we have it. We've got a nice profile right now. Now what we can do is mirror it to the other side. So we can select our feature, mirror plane, our XZ plane, and there we have it. So at this point, it is good to save our tire and check our parameters. Now this is really going to test our processing speed. And if we have a good GPU, if we have a good CPU, if we have a good amount of RAM, this will be a lot faster. I am going to speed this up for your sake uh, so that you don't have to wait for the processing time. So let's change some of the parameters here. Let's change, first of all, the rim diameter and let's call it, well, let's change our tread pattern number first of all. Let's go to 38. There we go. That looks great. Let's go up to 60 and see what it looks like. Well, that's looking pretty sharp right there. I might actually prefer it to be at 60. We can change the aspect ratio. Let's try 60 for our aspect ratio. All right, next thing, our tire width. And again, we're doing all of this testing to make sure our model doesn't break. If it breaks, if there's errors that come up, we know that we need to change something in our sketch or in our patterning or something. So this is just a testing period, the testing phase so that we can make sure that our model will work in the future. So let's try a 350 mil tire width. That is looking very nice. And then last but not least, let's change our rim diameter. Let's go to 19 inches. Okay, so as you can see, all of our parameters are working with our tire. Of course, I didn't try the tread gap, but we could actually experiment on that with that on our own. Uh, but everything is looking really, really good here for our tire so far. So as part of the contest that's coming up, 
each of you are going to have to design your own tire tread. And there are so many different options that you can choose from. The secret though is to take it one step at a time, test your parameters. Next step, test your parameters. Next step, test your parameters. So we spend approximately 30 minutes or an hour extra to develop our tire. But once our model is perfect and all our parameters are perfect, uh, we can create whatever size tire next for future projects. Anything that we want, it's super simple. And that's the whole point of using parameters in our models. Now, our tire is not finished yet. We have one secret that's coming up with the next part of this tutorial, part three. You are going to be in for a treat to learn this, and it's going to also test your skills. It's going to teach you a little bit of programming language as well. So stay tuned. You're not going to be disappointed. Thank you for supporting the Learn It channel. We hope to see you in the next tutorial. Please again, consider liking and subscribing if you benefited from this, leaving a comment below how you've utilized parameters in your own projects and how you benefited. We would love to hear from you. So thank you again for learning with the Learn It channel. We'll see you again soon.